Good morning, 729. The maker of Purell hand sanitizer facing two class action lawsuits for allegedly misleading consumers with false advertising. I don't know if that's something we want to hear right now. Fox Eye legal analyst Wendy Patrick joining us now to explain what's the false advertising. Wendy, good morning. Good morning, Shali. Well, let's face it. Hand sanitizer is on our shopping shortlist. There's a reason that it's been literally flying off the shelves in the last couple of weeks. That's because we believe that it works. Now, why do we believe it works? Because it, they say that it does. That is the basis of this lawsuit, is that the FDA is basically saying, as they did in a letter last month, prove it up. If you really do say that it kills all of these germs and it therefore prevents disease, you have to have the scientific studies that show that. The lawsuit is basically capitalizing on the fact that the FDA sent that letter and saying, hey, you can't prove these claims. And if you can't, you shouldn't be marketing it like that. Wait, but this coming at a time right now where, Wendy, you can't you can't find sanitizer anywhere. So that's it, right. It, it, it that's right. Work. Not only can you not find it anywhere, but here is also part of what's what's really incorporated within this lawsuit is when you look at what the FDA really says about hand sanitizer, it doesn't say that it's a replacement for washing your hands. That is why we have all those selections of 20 seconds worth of music, whatever you want to listen to as you do it. Mm -hmm. Hand sanitizer is meant to be used if you can't wash your hands. So for Purell, the parent company actually is the one that's being sued to represent that it kills 99% of germs and therefore prevents these diseases. And I'm paraphrasing, that's misleading. So goes the lawsuit. And like I said, they're also looking at the fact that the FDA says in order to make claims like this, there has to be solid scientific evidence that shows that it actually works as intended. And the lawsuit is basically saying it doesn't show that. Now, Purell, the parent company on its end, is saying we stand by the effectiveness of our product. So you can already see this is one lawsuit worth watching because it is so important to us right now. Wendy, uh, I think a lot of us have become experts on cleaning products over the past <laughs> few weeks as we are all scrambling to find them. and. How many, I mean, whether you talk about Purell, you talk about so many different brands, the soap, the sprays, everything that says kills 99.9% of the bacteria. So how do companies list that then on their product if they don't have like some type of permission or approval to do that? Isn't somebody overseeing that? They are, and that's exactly the issue, and that's why it's an issue that's probably going to be litigated, is we have companies that they have their lawyers, they understand that you can't falsely represent the effectiveness of a product. So it all comes down to what we always talk about when we talk about contracts, words matter. What exactly does this product claim to do, and does it in fact, is it can it be used as intended, and will it actually be able to be that effective? So whether it's hand sanitizer, whether it's soap, whether it's all the kinds of cleaning products that you reference, which we're all stocked up on right about now. And if we're not, thankfully, they're being restocked so we can buy them. But when we select what to buy and we make our choices, we should be able to rely on the representations made by these companies. That's the basis of this lawsuit, is that Purell's parent company is making claims they can't back up. And they're basically standing by and saying, yes, we can. So this lawsuit is going to be all about, OK, show me the evidence, like we say in court. You think that it can prevent this kind of disease and it's this effective? Prove it. Yeah, I, I'm going to be really curious to see. I'm, I'm holding another bottle of sanitizer in my hand. I'm not going to show the, the brand or anything, but it says. I know you usually have one right next to you, Shali. So oh, I you no don't know what I went right through now. to get this one bottle. It's like gold to me, but I still, for the record, washing your hands is better. We've said this time and time again. This is only to be used when you're not close to a sink to be able to wash your hands. But it says effective at eliminating 99.9% .9 of many common harmful germs and bacteria is in as little as 15 seconds. So now in this lawsuit, Purell is going to have to prove whatever they put on their packaging. Do you think they're going to be successful doing that? Well, it depends on what they're going to argue in terms of what that exactly means. In other words, does the killing germs, is it meant to be seen as translating into preventing disease? 
That is one of the problems because they have to be able to prove that correlation. And if they can't, they shouldn't be saying it on their products and they shouldn't be putting it on their label. That is the basis of the lawsuit. And that's also, Shelly, the basis of the letter that the FDA sent to Purell mm -hmm. in January. So that is an uphill battle in terms of if that's exactly what it was meant to, to be perceived as. But Purell may come back and basically say, we never promised that using our product would prevent disease. We were only representing exactly what it was intended to do. Either way, Shelly, it has become a priceless good right about now. So we're going to be following whether or not it is as effective as it claims to be. Priceless good for sure. Nobody in my house is allowed to use it because there's a sink over there. It's like gold. That's right. Wendy, thank you for being here. Thank you.